You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Less than two weeks to go until the FIFA Women's World Cup hits our shores. The opening game, New Zealand against Norway, Eden Park, Thursday, July 20. The final warm-up game for the Football Ferns tomorrow night. They take on World Cup debutantes Vietnam at McLean Park in Napier from 5.30. Let's bring in Football Ferns goalkeeper Victoria Essen. Victoria, thanks for taking the time for a chat. How are the excitement levels with a, uh, a World Cup on home soil fast approaching? Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting time for us all and obviously we joined here in camp uh, yesterday into Napier so with a warm-up game against Vietnam, it's a good opportunity for us to test um, what we want to do at the World Cup and just yeah, have a have a shot at um, walking out in front of a crowd and getting everything ready for uh, D-Day on the 20th of July. How important is a, is a good performance in this final warm-up match before the tournament proper starts? Yeah, it's, it's a chance for us to refine what we've been working on for the past nine weeks with the girls being in the training program. So uh, trying different formations, seeing what works against the different opponent. You know, we've been playing boys for the last nine weeks, so playing an actual um, women's first team will be slightly different, even though the boys were fantastic. Um, so, yeah, just a good opportunity to, to move the ball around. And obviously we've got our final squad um, we're selected now and everyone's in camp and that's something which uh, we haven't had for the last nine weeks. So happy to have the, the final few people on board and um, get to put out a, a solid performance, we hope. I guess everybody comes from all parts of the world, don't they? Some are obviously based in New Zealand, but many are based offshore, including you. How nice is it to come together just as a whole bunch of Kiwis? Yeah, it's fantastic, actually. It's always really nice to join the team and, and hear the Kiwi accent. But, you know, being able to come home and... Um, play in front of family and friends is something really special and it's an opportunity that we don't have uh, very often and I think the girls are just really looking forward to soaking up the, the tournament and everything that it brings with being at home. You've really made the number one goalkeeping spot your own in the last couple of years. How happy have you been, Victoria, with your performances for New Zealand? Yeah, <laughs> Um Look, it's, uh, I'm grateful to have um, been given a fair amount of game time in the last couple of years, and I, I definitely am hoping to keep refining my game. Um, I don't think there's ever an end goal um, in terms of I'll be satisfied when when I reach this particular point. So, yeah, it's about just continuous refinement, and I'm obviously grateful for every opportunity that I get to step on the pitch and represent the firm. What do those refinements uh, look like for you? They say goalkeepers get better with experience. Where have the, the improvements come in your game in the last couple of years or so? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you, you gain experience over time and in terms of being on the field, playing against a variety of different players. You know, now I've played in America, Norway, Germany and, and Scotland. So you're exposed to different styles of play, different players and completely different climates as well. So I think that all helps them. Obviously, uh, when I when I talk about refinement, it's just slowly tweaking the tweaking your game over a number of years and accumulating training, and hopefully to become the most um, complete goalkeeper possible. But it's not, as I said, it's not an end goal. There's just um, continuous changes and tweaks that need to be made, and and obviously leading up to a big tournament, the the tweaks get smaller and smaller to hopefully provide a good performance at the end of it all. Absolutely. So you're with Rangers in Scotland, where you've been for the last year or so. How has that move worked out for you? Yeah, Scotland's been fantastic. I've been here for a year now, um, and it's provided me the opportunity to play at a massive club, and I'm grateful for the, the resources that we have at Rangers, and uh, it's something which has been completely different to the other clubs I've played at, which have been um, women's, um, women's only from an elite level. Um, so the clubs have been a lot smaller. But obviously with Rangers men's backing, we're able to tap into some of the resource that the men's side brings. Um, so that alone has been eye-opening for me. And um, just, yeah, the, the exposure to a slightly different league, the Scottish League, and it's, which is kind of similar to England, a couple of years behind in terms of the number of professional teams, but they're looking to try and catch up to England. Uh, so, yeah, all, all of that, it's it's learning, and I like being in Scotland. The people are lovely. The accents are rough. and <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, honestly, I've, I've really enjoyed my past year there. You often hear about the, the Rangers-Celtic rivalry, one of the most famous footballing rivalries in the world. Is it real? Uh, can you tell us? Is it real? <laughs> 
Yeah, it's 100 percent real. I was actually telling someone the other day. My roommate Liv, who plays for Celtic, <laughs> so she said to me when she first signed up Celtic, oh, Vic, like it's it's pretty tough Rangers Celtic, and you have to be careful going out in public if you're in your your Rangers or Celtic gear. And I just thought she was having a laugh, um, but then I. I actually joined uh, Rangers and I know exactly what she's on about. So on the men's side, it's very um, competitive and Scotland's mad about football, to be honest. So, yeah, you have to be a little bit careful. But at the end of the day, it's just all competitive and, and people who are really, really passionate about football. So it's good to see in a way. Absolutely. Uh, last World Cup in France, 2019, you went to that World Cup but didn't play. How different do you feel going into this one, knowing that you are highly likely to, to play a part? Yeah, obviously I, d- I don't know if I'm going to play and, and no one knows and no one can be content with their position in the team and I think that's really important for us all to know and the girls are pretty good at that. Um, so it's it's nice to have played the last few games leading into this World Cup, but yeah, at the end of the day... Um, you know anything can happen, and I'm sure whoever Yitka puts out on the field for for those first three games in our group will be the best team that she feels fit. So, like, we'll see what happens. But uh, currently, you know, I, I feel fit and I feel ready to go. So, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. I've always found that the goalkeeping dynamic within a squad like this fascinating because there are three of you, and clearly only one of you can play each game. But how does the dynamic between the three of you work in terms of your trainings, your support for one another, and and the two who have to sit and watch the other one out there? Yeah, as you said, being a goalkeeper is quite a unique position, but we're also really fortunate because we have one coach and three keepers. So in terms of ratio, we get a lot more like one-to-one feedback and um, instant, instant feedback as well as opposed to the outfielders you know there's 20 of them and there's three or so coaches so that's one of the reasons I actually really like goalkeeping is that I feel like you can make games every single day because of the, the ratio of player to coach and um, I think you know we're all competitive we're all at this level because we want to play but at the end of the day that we know it's it's got to be team first and whoever's going to step on the pitch will do their job and you know, you've know got to treat others how you want to be treated and I think that's something which our goalkeeping unit's pretty good at. Absolutely brilliant. And, and I know it's not your area of the pitch, it's down the other end, but have, have you been able to come up with any insight as to why goals have been a little bit hard to come by for New Zealand in recent times? Hey look, at the top level, goals are really hard to come by and nothing is ever a given. So... It's it's really important that we celebrate when we do score. And I think that we have the ability to put the ball in the back of the net. And, and sometimes it hasn't um, happened as frequently as we would have liked in the past. But at the end of the day, football's a game of chances and you've got to take chances. So I hope that um, we can do that this World Cup and, and make the most of the opportunities that we do have in front of the net. Mm. Are you the only player from Rangers coming to the World Cup? Are there any of your teammates playing for other countries? Uh, yeah, one of my teammates, Kayla McCoy, because she plays for Jamaica and she made the squad, which is fantastic. So they're based over in Aussie. So uh, depending on what happens with both sides, I may or may not see it. But it's great for another player from Rangers to be uh, at the World Cup and representing the club and representing the country as well. Outstanding. Well, it's been great to get the chance to catch up with you, Victoria. All the best against Vietnam in this final warm-up game in Napier and then on towards that uh, that opening match. Gee, what an exciting prospect against Norway, Eden Park, on the night of Thursday, July 20. It's good to know that you haven't picked up a Scottish accent. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I actually got told the other day that one week at home they'd make Kiwi accents sicker than ever, so <laughs> it's good to hear that you agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for the chat, Victoria. All the best against Vietnam. Thanks, Piney. Cheers. See you later. See you later. Thanks, Victoria. Victoria S in there. Uh, Football Ferns' number one goalkeeper, even though she was pretty reticent to admit it. She is, uh, I think, by some distance, the uh, the number one, number one in this team now. Look forward to seeing how they go against Vietnam tomorrow and then on towards the World Cup. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.